Welcome to my brand new Crash Bandicoot review series where I'll be taking a second look at all the Crash games. Why am I doing it a second time? Well, it's an excuse to replay all the games again, but more importantly, I can improve the original videos since there's a lot I can do to make them better, like not stretching out 4x3 clips to 16x9. Not only that, but I can talk about things that I missed last time. For example, I didn't mention that you can upgrade everyone's weapons once you unlock all 24 vehicles. More importantly, while I did mention that you can make farting and burping sounds during the loading screens by pressing the action button, I didn't acknowledge the fact that you can change the pitch of those sounds by tilting the stick up and down. Yeah, as you can see, today I'll be taking another look at Crash Tag Team Racing, the Crash game I own the most copies of. This was the third racing game in the series, and they clearly wanted to try something a bit different this time around. Crash Nitro Kart tried very hard to recreate the success of Crash Team Racing, and by that I mean it follows the exact same formula. Green villain that threatens to destroy the planet if you don't choose to race, win every race in the hub world to fight a boss, repeat until you beat the game. I'd say the biggest difference with Nitro Kart was its anti-gravity sections. I have to give it credit, it did it way before Mario Kart 8. Tag Team Racing, on the other hand, was nothing like the two previous racing games. In this, you'll be teaming up with other racers, gunning everyone down with rocket launchers. Not just that though, but for half of the game, you won't even be racing. You'll be exploring a theme park on foot. So yeah, just a little bit different to the previous games. With that being said, let's dive right into Crash Tag Team Racing. The game takes place in Von Clutch's Motor World, which is a dodgy racing theme park. Von Clutch is a cyborg that relies on this black hole power gem to keep him alive. There's a bit of a problem though, someone stole it, along with all the other gems in the park. As he becomes more desperate to recover the stolen gem, he sets up an event. Whoever recovers the gem wins ownership of the park. That's where the main characters come in, we see them racing each other when they crash through the gate. No pun intended. Just kidding, I made the exact same pun in the first video, it was definitely intended. Von Clutch invites them all to participate in the event, and the Bandicoots at first don't really care. It's only when Cortex comes in and says he could use the theme park as a base for his evil operations when they change their minds. Pasadena Opossum is another brand new character introduced in this game, she's also participating to win ownership. Then there's Willy Wumper Cheeks, the mascot of Von Clutch's motor world. What is that thing? Lastly, we have Chick and Stu, the commentators. That's all there is to the story at this point in time. The teams then enter the park to search for the stolen gems. Now the park consists of six major areas. You've got Mystery Island, which is pirate themed, Happily Ever Faster, which is fairy tale themed, Tyrannosaurus Rex, which who would have guessed is prehistoric, Tomb Town is Egyptian themed, Astro Land is space themed, and the Midway, which acts as a hub world. The only area that you have access to at the beginning is Mystery Island, since you collect the gem for it when you enter the Midway. You'll need to find the stolen gems before you can unlock the other areas. But you don't have to go straight into Mystery Island, you can explore the Midway for first and maybe do some mini games. After all, you are going to need a lot of coins if you want to buy character outfits and new vehicles. By far my favourite mini game is Von Clutch's Lanes. It's a simple bowling mini game but you can unlock a more advanced version later on in the game. The other mini games aren't really worth mentioning, the majority of them are very similar and some of them are just reskins. If you don't want to play the mini games then maybe you could go around looking for the many dioramas scattered around the park which are just various ways of killing Crash. Some of them are genuinely quite disturbing. <laughs> I could kind of feel that. If you don't feel like finding the dioramas, firstly, I don't blame you. Secondly, you can instead go up to the main characters around the park and complete jobs for them. Most of them ask you to bring something back from one of the main areas. For example, Coco asks you to bring back the fusion unit, which you can find in Mystery Island. Engine wants you to find the plutonium, also hidden in Mystery Island. Doing these side missions for the first time allows you to play as these characters in races, and when you complete them all, you'll unlock the tier two side missions. Completing the tier two and then tier three missions will unlock new vehicles for those characters and then you'll be able to upgrade their weapons. And if you don't want to do any of that, then you can go straight into Mystery Island, which offers even more to do. One of my favourite things to do in each area is the chicken challenge. Basically, hundreds of chickens spawn and you have a limited amount of time to collect them all. Every chicken you pick up will gain a little bit of time back, but not much. You can't afford to waste time. It can get quite stressful if you've only got a few more chickens left with not much time on the clock, and then you fail to make a jump or something. Because you know you've got to get all the way back up there in a very short amount of time, and there's no more chickens on the way for you to collect to gain some time back. I honestly love the blend of gameplay tag team racing offers. Think of it this way, I enjoy racing, I enjoy platforming and exploring open areas. This game combines them both. It would have been nice if it did the racing part a bit better, but either way, it still does both. The on-foot side of the game is definitely the strongest. The camera can be a bit janky at times, but other than that, I think it's pretty solid. Each location offers enough in terms of things to do and find, to the point where I was satisfied with the amount of time I was spending in each area. However, the game isn't called Crash Tag Team Walking, it's called Crash Tag Team Racing, and unfortunately, the racing isn't particularly good. It's not bad, it's just mediocre. Could have been a lot better. I'd say the racing is most 
enjoyable when playing on the insane speed setting, which isn't available at the beginning. I definitely have more incentive to drive myself on the insane speed setting instead of just clashing with someone else and letting them drive me. So there's three tracks in each area, but there's five different modes that you can choose from. For now, we'll just talk about the standard race mode. You have three different difficulty options, the hardest rewarding you with a higher coin bonus. I will say I like how it gives you the option to select the difficulty for each individual race instead of making you select one at the beginning of the game and then not having the ability to change it later on. Let's start off with some positives. I do like the clashing mechanic. Teaming up and gunning other races down or driving someone else while they shoot is a really cool idea. In fact, I wouldn't mind if a new Crash Racing game featured this mechanic. A modern day version with lots more customization options and online play could work really well. It could also be a completely unbalanced shit show, but I like thinking positively. Now this mechanic is of course the main part of tag team racing, hence the name, and you can easily exploit it. I'm sure you've heard it a million times in other videos, but you can clash with another racer, gun everyone down, then when you eventually run out of ammo, you can disconnect from them and reconnect instantly to gain all of that ammo back. Not only that, but when you disconnect with someone, it propels you forward, you get a massive speed boost. So there's nothing stopping you from shooting everyone for three laps and then ditching the driver last second before crossing the line to take an easy win. You don't even need to do that, you can cross the finish line paired up and you'll both take first place. It's just that the CPU will also have the ability to disconnect. So it's best to ditch them while you have the chance because they will try and beat you at your own game. It's funny because sometimes they'll just say, well, it's been fun until next time out of nowhere and it's completely unexpected and I can't help but laugh. Also, you get a coin bonus for every vehicle that you destroy, so there's no real reason to play any other way. You're essentially wasting hundreds of coins in every single race that you don't team up in. There's definitely specific characters that you want to clash with because the weapons are not balanced at all. Crash's Wumper Gun sucks, but Nina has this overpowered energy shotgun that destroys vehicles in two hits. Engine has a bloody rocket launcher, Coco has a lightning gun, Crunch has a minigun. Thankfully, when you clash with someone, you're not limited to your own weapon, you can also use theirs as well. So that means you can still play as your favourite characters even if they have crap weapons, like Cortex for example. If you want to play as Von Clutch, then go ahead, just make sure that you find Engine, Crunch or Nina to merge with. Speaking of characters, Dingo Dial isn't in this game, 1 out of 10. Even when you upgrade the character weapons later on in the game, yeah, it makes the crappy weapons a little bit better, but you're still gonna pick the characters that have good weapons because they were great from the beginning, now they're even better. Personally, I'd rather play as a character that has an overpowered weapon to then clash with another character that has an overpowered weapon, so I have two. Items still work the same way here, you pick them up while you're driving, but unfortunately there's no TNT or Nitro crates, and as far as I know, I don't think there's any items that you can leave on the ground. Most of the items are projectiles, which kind of sucks since, you know, we already have full-blown weapons. I suppose they're good for when you're driving solo, but there could have been a bit more variety, I think. I miss TNTs. These items are way too overpowered as well, by the way. When you drop the piano, the cow, or the submarine, it will instantly blow up anyone that touches it for about 5 seconds, and it creates a blast radius that's nearly impossible for the other races to get by, so you throw one of these down, you're gonna pick up like 5-6 to six knockouts. Pretty much everything else, locked on and destroys vehicles instantly with a few exceptions. Not only is every item overpowered, but you get them way too frequently. Well, I don't think it's any more frequent than the other games, but because every item in this is so good, I think they should have spaced the items out a bit more. When you're in first place, it's a wrap. You're going to have continuous items to throw, you're going to have infinite ammo from the disconnecting trick. The items and weapons are not balanced in the slightest. Now onto the tracks. I think they're decent, but none of them really stood out to me. I think Tyrannosaurus Rex have my favourite set of tracks, with Happily Ever Faster coming in second. I just feel like the team racing and nitro kart tracks are a lot more memorable than anything in this game. I can never fully remember the track layouts or even the names of the tracks no matter how many times I return to play this game. The Toomtown races felt like one big track split into three. Same with Astroland, they all blended in with each other. They're not bad, they're just mediocre and too similar to each other which results in them not being very memorable. As far as the controls go, they're a bit too stiff for my liking which was one of my biggest complaints about nitro karts driving as well. It's like they looked at the previous two games and said, all right, we'll go with these controls and then we'll make them worse. Drifting is completely different here as well. Usually you hop into a power slide and then perform three mini turbos to build up your speed. Here you just tap a button to perform a drift. That's it. Can't say I prefer it over the three mini turbos, but it does the job. If you hold a drift for a long enough amount of time, you can use a speed boost whenever you want, but I never really found it that useful. The other races seem to gain a lot of artificial speed when you use it, and sometimes you can't even catch up with them. How does that work? I activate a jet engine and they're still faster than me? I believe the term in racing games is rubber banding, where other races will gain an unnatural amount of speed to catch up with you and prevent you from getting too far ahead. I think the reason it seems like they cranked that up to the max 
max limit in this game is because of the weapon feature. When you're dominating in first place, they're not going to stand a chance without it. I'm just confused as to why it happens when you're in last place and use a speed boost. Overall, as a complete experience, I think the racing is decent enough for me to at the very least enjoy it. The clash mechanic makes for some chaotic moments, and it's refreshing to play something a bit different to the previous racing games. The driving isn't the best, and the tracks might be inferior to CTR and CNK, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun, you just have to find it. If you play it like you play CTR, then you'll be disappointed. If you take it for what it is, gunning as many races down as you possibly can, you'll enjoy it a bit more. After all, it is tag team racing. At the end of the day, though, it was marketed as a racing game, so of course the racing portion should have been top notch, especially when the first kart racer in the series was the best kart racer of all time. As for the other game types I mentioned earlier, you've got Crashinator mode, where targets are placed all over the track, and you need to hit as many as you can while finishing the lap within a time limit. Rolling Thunder mode, where you have one lap to destroy as many vehicles as possible. Fast lap, which is just a one lap time trial, and finally run and gun, where you go around the track shooting targets. If you perform well enough, you'll earn a power crystal, which is really the only reason I played the other modes. I didn't care for them too much, but it's it's nice that they're here. When it comes to other modes, I'd much rather spend my time in the battle arena, where the first team to destroy 10 vehicles wins. The clashing mechanic really shines in the battle arena, and every team starts with the basic Wumper Gun weapon, which is great because picking a specific character won't quite guarantee you a win like in the main races. In the battle arena, the other weapons are treated as power-ups that spawn around the map, which further proves that these weapons are superior. Not that I needed any more proof, two-shotting enemies in race mode was more than enough. It's interesting because the PSP version of Tag Team Racing has two extra battle arenas, the Tragic Kingdom, and Fight Like an Egyptian. It would have been nice to have these in the other versions as well because there's only two, and that's quite disappointing. I believe you can play them on the PS2 actually if you connect your PSP, and I think you can also use the five exclusive vehicles that are in the PSP version as well. There's a couple stunt arenas you can play in as well where you're given five minutes to land as many stunts as you can. Every now and then you'll get a speed boost where you get to go full speed up a ramp, that's the best part about this mode. Aside from that, I usually just end up doing backflips for five minutes, but there's fun to be had here. I just prefer the battle arena. Once you've earned enough crystals in Mystery Island, you can then use them to unlock the Mystery Island jump pad, which takes you to the stolen gem for the next area. If you don't have enough, you can always buy a couple from the park drones. Now you have access to Happily Ever Faster, which is my favourite area in the game. It's got a cool theme, the tracks are pretty good, it's got one of the best chicken challenges as well because there's more platforming involved. But you'll generally be doing the same things here to gather enough crystals so that you can unlock the jump pad for the next area. I have to say I do like the progression system because it lets you choose how you want to earn the crystals and doesn't force you to do anything that you don't want to do. If you don't like certain races, then earn the crystal somewhere else instead. There's plenty of places you can get them. Once you're done with Happily Ever Faster, it's time for Tyrannosaurus Rex, and at this point you may be wondering, what's the purpose of all these ninja penguins? Their purpose is to be a complete fucking nuisance. They walk around and attack you for no reason, which makes you drop a few coins and stuns you for a couple seconds. They can't even kill you. Not that it would matter since death comes at no cost in this game. If anything, you get rewarded for dying because of the dioramas. You don't lose anything, you just get sent back to where you were where you died. Back to Tyrannosaurus Rex though, of course all the tracks here are prehistoric themed. Like I said earlier, these are some of my favourite tracks, and I think the area itself is the biggest of them all, which makes for some fun exploration and platforming. Loads of buttons and secrets lying around, it's great. Once you finish up that area, you're at the halfway stage of the event, and at this point, everyone is aware that something shady is going on. They have a sneaky suspicion that someone is rigging the tracks, but they haven't quite figured out who. So you continue the search and move on to Tombtown. You might recognise the music here as well. <laughs> It's a remix of Crash to Insanity soundtrack, and it's not the only one either. If you didn't quite hear the resemblance in Tombtown, then the minigame music will make it clear. same people that made Twin Sanity soundtrack also made Tag Team Racings, and I'm a big fan of that. When you're done in Tombtown, this is where it all goes down. Cortex storms out in bandages and says that something is messing with the tracks. Coco thinks whoever stole the gems has some sort of connection to Wumper Whip because there's a trail of it leading to every stolen gem. Wumper Whip, of course, being a drink made from Wumper Fruit. Gameplay-wise, it just gives you double coins for a short amount of time. Instead of suspecting the walking, talking Wumper Fruit who creates Wumper Whip, they all suspect Crash because he likes drinking it. Willy Wumper gets pissed at how dumb 
dumb they all are and just admits to being the thief. He pulls out Von Clutch's black heart power gem and runs off into the final area, Astroland. I love how this whole thing is set up like a Scooby-Doo mystery as well. And I would have succeeded too if it wasn't for you meddling bandicoots. Even if it was blatantly obvious from the beginning that it was Willy Wumpa. The majority of Astroland is floating platforms, which made it a bit annoying to traverse. It's fun, but if you miss a jump to a moving platform, you're gonna have to wait for it to come all the way back to you. It doesn't seem like much, but when it happens multiple times, it gets a bit irritating. You could just say, well, don't miss your jumps then. And yeah, that'll work as well. The tracks are decent here. One of them is literally just a loop and has nine laps instead of three. It's kind of like Baby Park from Mario Kart Double Dash. Craters on Uranus is the best track in this area though. You're out in space. Well, still the theme park, but you know what I mean. There's portals you travel through, UFOs shooting down on the track. That's what I love about the theme park setting. It allows for lots of different mini themes. After you acquire the Astroland Power Gem, you catch up to Willy Wumper. He tries to escape in a rocket ship, but... It's literally just a theme park attraction. Crash pulls the lever to stop him and then Crunch yanks him out. Cortex then straight up kills Willy Wumper because he's tired of all the bullshit, rendering him nothing more than a puddle of sad Wumper juice. Cortex then tries to kill Crash as well because why not, right? But it doesn't really work out for him. I hate chicken. And with Willy Wumpa liquefied and Cortex out of the picture, the Bandicoots win ownership of the theme park. They give it right back to Von Clutch though because they never really wanted it in the first place. Speaking of Von Clutch, this is when we all find out that his Black Heart Power Gem was liquefied along with Willy Wumpa. So he dies. Just kidding, they found the Black Heart Power Gem in what was once Willy Wumpa's nose, and that's it, you've beaten the game. Sort of. Chances are there's still a lot of extra stuff that you haven't done, the game lets you know that very clearly. Keep playing to unlock everything. No. I don't think I will. But yeah, my opinion hasn't changed upon replaying the game. I still believe tag team racing is a good game. I love how it's set in a theme park and I always have a lot of fun exploring each area, completing the missions, chicken challenges, discovering all the secrets, unlocking character outfits and vehicles. The racing, while not the best, was still enjoyable on the insane speed setting and the clashing mechanic was a nice change for a Crash Bandicoot racing game. It definitely had its flaws, but I had a good time blowing up other vehicles to be completely honest. The battle arena it was a great time as well. I talked about this earlier, but I'd love it if this mechanic returned for a brand new Crash Racing game. Hopefully it'd be a bit more balanced, but online play will be hectic either way. It's very much an idea that works really well in multiplayer because while well, you're teaming up with people, it makes sense. But let me know down below what you think of the game. I know some people love it and equally a lot of people despise it. So the comment section should be interesting. I'm not entirely sure which Crash game I'll revisit next. So let me know down below which one you'd like to see. I'm thinking I might do Crash Bash, but we'll see. That being said, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Definitely subscribe if you're new here and want to see more, and I will see you all in my next video.